Welcome into the door of psychic experience. Ask and you will be given what you ask for. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. Anyone who seeks finds. If only you will knock, the door will open. And the truth within your higher spiritual self will be revealed to you. Come now with us and go where angels come and you can too. Welcome to Psychic Experience. This is a metaphysical spiritual talk show. We have various metaphysical spiritual people come guest on our show. And it's being presented by the First Spiritist Church in San Diego. I can't tell you the address, but you can find us in the phone book. And it's where angels come, and so can you any Sunday. We have resident angels, myself. The host of the show, I'm the pastor, Reverend Doris Horvath. I have an assistant pastor, Reverend Marcella Jones, who's a gifted healer. We have Reverend Susan Moore, who's been a minister in our church for a long time. And we have our present, Reverend Celine Clark. And we have our licentiate ministers, Rosie Oberlees. And Reverend Pete Monroe and Reverend Fran Monroe, who live in Harmony Grove now. And any Sunday, you can find us in the City Heights area of San Diego. We're in the phone book. You can find our address. And we have today a very exciting duel guessing today. They are very, very talented people who do something that is absolutely fantastic that all of you, I'm sure, are going to really learn something maybe that you have not thought about. So I'm going to introduce them and let them show you and tell you about what their gifts are. They're very gifted people. They work together. They work a little bit differently, but it's basically very closely knit. So I'm going to First of all, over here on my far right, I'm going to introduce Marty Baker. Would you like to say hello to our TV guests? Hi. And next to her is Michael Perry. And they work together. And I'm going to be asking some questions, and you're going to get to know what their work is all about. And then they are going to show some of the things that they've been doing. It's very fascinating what they do. I only have met um, before one time uh, people that do what they do. So I'm going to start asking questions, and Michael says that he wants to be the one that likes to talk. <laughs> he's, he's a Libra, and they're known for talking. So first of all, I'm going to ask you to describe uh, what you do. Oh, well, thanks for having us here. <laughs> and uh, well, I work as a medium and I hear the voices of the people speaking to me uh, on the other side and uh, I can see them as well and feel them but my wife uh, Marty she can see them very well to the point where she can draw a portrait of one of them oh good and uh, so we may be uh, having a session with someone and uh, I might be talking to the husband of the lady and uh, my wife might be drawing the portrait of that person as well. Okay. And, now, uh, could you tell our audience what's the difference between a psychic and a medium? Because they may want to know. I mean, you're getting psychic impressions. Maybe she's working as a medium. I don't know. But Right. Well, a medium is someone who gets all of their information and uh, is making a connection with the person who is deceased. Okay. Whereas uh, someone that is getting psychic uh, information can be getting it from the person or an object, uh, as in what is called psychometry. So uh, there, there are different ways that a psychic can work, but a medium basically is psychic, has to be psychic, but is, is allowing the spirit to, as it were, kind of take them over to a degree, you know, okay. where they can feel them and hear what they're saying and, and uh, 
even have mannerisms, even display mannerisms of the person. So now you're dealing with uh, spirits from the other side in order to do the type of work that you're doing. How do you know that your information comes from the other side and not from the person that's having the sitting with you? Okay. How do you know that's that? A, that's a good point. If um, Now, some people would say, oh, well, you know, you could be mind reading, mm -hmm. or you could be picking up on this, or you could be getting in, you know, by looking at the person and then, you know, okay. how they're displaying themselves and things like this. But really, if the information uh, is, if they're telling me things that the person doesn't know, and that they can only verify by going to a relative and uh, saying, this is what this person said, and then they find out that, by Jove, that was their great-grandfather's real name, and that's the way he died, and not the way they thought that the person had died, then you know, where is that information coming from? It has to be coming from someone who's moved on. Now, you generally, you, it sounds to me like you tune in to the person that's come to you, or the client that's come to you, and, and you psychically are able to bring out information about, let's say that they want to know what, what their grandfather is doing in the spirit world, and maybe Marty then would be drawing a picture of him. Is well, no. we work no, completely works. separately. Uh, it works I, separately. Have, I have headphones on while he's yeah. talking so that uh, I'm not influenced by anything that he says. Oh, okay. And we're both mediums, even though I call myself a psychic artist, because I'm also connecting with people on the other side rather than getting any information from the person that's sitting with me. So do you have a one person come to you and you're both working for that person to... Well, the, to, uh, the, well, the person that sits with us yes. is, uh, of course, wanting to speak to maybe their father or their mother. Okay. Now, we do do sessions over the telephone as well. Oh, you for do? For thousands and thousands of miles away. Can in, Marty drive oh, Absolutely, them too? absolutely. Okay. And, so, and so we are connecting with... Uh, if we're doing a session over the phone, then the person, the people come into our living room and stand in our living room and pull faces at us and, you know, show us that their leg was missing or whatever and, and, and you know, that's, and they communicate with us in our house. It's so, like a prearranged meeting with the people on the other side that, uh, with, you know, the client that we have sitting with us. Okay. It's, it's like a get-together. It's all got right. nothing. It's got nothing at all to do with the person sitting in front of us. I okay. mean, they could be a total skeptic. It wouldn't make any difference because people say, "Do we need to bring anything, or do we need to? Do you need to hold anything?" And we say, "No. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got to do with who we feel in the room, who okay. we're going to connect with." How does what you do come as a benefit to other people that would be coming to you? Go ahead. Go on. <laughs> Well, um, if you were to see people's faces when my wife, uh, just what my wife does when she draws a picture, and you'll see some old man with his daughter sitting with us, and I might have been speaking to his um, wife. wife, who's deceased, and then my wife will give him the picture, and uh, he'll just be sitting there with tears coming out of his eyes, oh, okay. and she's drawn his mother. And the only okay. words he can say is, is mum, and the daughter will say, no, that's not mum. And he says, no, it's my mum. So my wife's drawn his mother, you know. Or okay. Does it make any difference if someone believes in the afterlife or not? To get a communication? Mm -hmm. No. No, we actually had a woman in <laughs> Spokane who sat down to make us out to be frauds, and uh, her husband came through very clearly, and so did... Uh, my wife drew, drew a picture of him and she nearly fell off her chair. <laughs> so, I thought she was going to have a heart attack. I thought, I thought she was going to have a heart attack on us. So oh, well. it, it doesn't make any difference. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Well, I could, I, I'm going to ask some more questions, but I, I'd really like to see some of your pictures that you've done first and okay. just tell okay. the audience something about them okay. so that the audience can see what we're talking about at this okay. point here. Just hold this up in front of you and... And uh, yes, uh, which camera's going to zoom in here? You're going right over here. Okay. 
There we go. Okay. Now this this picture was drawn for a young woman. Uh, this is the uh, drawing. Oh, there we go. There's a drawing here, and this was drawn. Uh, my wife got to this point here, and she just she just drawn this, and she says, "Oh my God, you're drawing my granddad." Uh huh. And this is his picture out of his driving license here. Oh. And then she came back to see us the following year. This was many years ago when Marty was doing this. And then she came and saw us the following year, and my wife thought to herself, how can I top this? You know, I've drawn her granddad. Well, uh, this she drew this picture here, and it turns out that this is her great-grandmother, her oh, mother's mother. Okay. And so that was one. Uh, this, uh, this was a man called Uncle Frankie here. Mm -hmm. uh, when she uh, drew this picture, I was also speaking to him, and uh -huh. uh, he came through as being the man's father. So we only have 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, so this is a son who came through. Uh -huh. These are two friends. Uh -huh. And uh, he said t to my wife, well, this is my, my two buddies. If that's the top half and that's the bottom half is the other one, and when he gives us the two pictures and we s spliced it together, it sure is his two buddies are in spirit. Oh my goodness. So That's they do amazing. they do very clever things, you know, very I'll just amazing. show you one or two more. Um, this one here, uh, we were at a house one evening and Benny Goodman came through, oh. and we didn't know what Benny Goodman looked like or that they even had a connection to him. But it turned out that the lady's husband was in Benny Goodman's band for many years, and he was in, laying in bed because he didn't believe in this stuff. Uh -oh. So once again, it doesn't matter whether you believe in it, it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, this was, a, I believe, a grandfather for someone who came through. Uh -huh. uh, here's some more here. Where are we go? There we go. This was a lady's father who came through. And uh, there's a lady here, and here we go, there's another lady. Oh. I also, when I draw them in group sessions, because I'll, I'll do some pictures when we're doing a whole group, uh -huh. <coughs> um, people don't recognize them right away sometimes, and so Michael tunes into them, gives them a, a few examples, or you know, some names connected to it, and that's I how see. we figure out who it is. There's one last one I'll show you, which is a very good one. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one was... Good likeness. Yeah, it's a, it's a great aunt. Now, the lady doesn't know who she is, but she found the picture in the family... Uh, in a family group portrait. Oh. And uh, all her relatives are gone, so she has no way to know who she really is, but she's a great aunt. Oh, my goodness. So there you go. So that is fascinating. Well, how long after death can someone communicate then? I mean, do they have, is it two days, two weeks, or how long? He's brought through somebody that was gone four hours. Only four and hours? I, and yeah. I drew somebody that had died that same day, so oh, it doesn't take long. I think three weeks ago she drew in a group a lady who had died that day. And the caregiver, oh. the lady in the front, was the hospice, hospice nurse. nurse for her. You know, I, I think that's probably very consoling to someone to be able to see there's life after death that way. It's such that's, good yeah. evidence. That's yes. the, the biggest thing is it's really evidential. And it's, I mean, it's no way to dispute what we do. Well, I think it no, needs to be. Isn't. It needs to be evidential. It ne you, yeah. ne you know, I mean, a young man came through the other day and he told me the street he died on. Oh, that's, my. you know, that's, that's, that's what people need. Well, I know that some people are going to ask you, what are your beliefs having to do with spirituality and God and reincarnation? But, um, well, it seems like it's self explanatory. It, it, pretty, it, it pretty much is, yeah. Uh, How could there not be a God? Right. What about if someone's pet cat was to go into spirit? Would you be able to do something <laughs> with that, too? I don't usually. Actually, sometimes I do draw them not on. I, on the portraits, but I draw little uh, doodles sometimes too. I'll finish the portrait and just draw these little doodles, what I call doodles. Uh, some of them are very specific. I, I draw animals then. He does bring through animals. He's done a whole session 
an hour session with a horse <laughs> on oh, the really? other side. I felt like Dr. Doolittle talking to Mr. Wow. Ed. <laughs> okay. Well, what do you believe it's like on, on uh, well, afterlife or other realms or... Well, I think afterlife. we both share the same uh, opinion. Um, to us, uh, the other side's very real. It has it has substance to it and color and sound and light just a lot more of it because it vibrates at a faster rate so that it, but it's every every bit as much a real place as this and I say. Uh, how do you think that you're doing what you do is able to, to really benefit humanity as a as a medium <coughs> as a, a way of m giving messages. How do you feel it's, it's benefiting? Well, I think people, that... Uh, humanity. I think that if people knew with, without doubt that there, was, that there was no death and that reincarnation was a fact, I think that war would cease to be. And, and I think that people would start to realize and evolve a lot quicker, you know. They wouldn't, there wouldn't be the fighting that goes on. I, I agree. What about people that are so afraid of dying? Ah, well I, I channeled some people for a minister who sat in front of me. Now I didn't know he was a minister, but four people came through for him and um, and I said to him, gosh, I said, you're a spiritual person. You go and see all these people in hospital. And this guy, Charlie, on the other side said, well, he's a minister. And he told me that the people that have the worst deaths are the hard Christians and the, the Catholics. Fundamentalists. The fundamentalists. He said yes. they have the worst deaths. He's, he's, be, he's been at thousands of people's crossings and he said they have the worst time dying. Well, they don't because they don't believe in life after death. Well, they do, but they have all this hell and they have a damnation lot of fear. and fear. He said, and, and he said out of everybody they have the worst deaths. <laughs> It's interesting, isn't it? I shouldn't laugh, but that's sort of funny. <laughs> well, it's sad. It is sad. Um, I, I have some relatives that are very uh, oh, fundamental, fundamental yeah. born-again Christians, and it's so sad to me that they don't feel what I feel. Like, my, my mother died when I was 11, uh -huh. and I have felt her ever since. And uh, it's sad for me that... Uh, People that I love don't feel the same thing because it's so comforting to know that they're there. What happens when you show someone in your family that, that is like that? What is their response when you show them actual pictures? Mm. What do they say? Oh, Some of the devil. She, <laughs> really? She, she drew, I get a lot yeah. of prayers aimed at me at least. <laughs> she drew a picture of one uh, lady's grandmother and uh, this lady left the picture on her table at home and her mother came home and said where did you get this picture of my mother from <laughs> and she said and she said oh and she didn't tell her at first and when she told her and gave it to her she burned it because she thought it was of the devil oh <laughs> my sad? goodness isn't that sad <laughs> it's, it's, a a it's her mother saying hello to her oh. it's just pretty sad really but you know people are who they are they change, you know. Well, don't you suppose, though, these people that don't believe when they do go in the spirit world, they have a big surprise oh. waiting for them? Ooh, we yeah. get a lot of that from yeah. the other side. They say, oh, I was wrong. We brought through quite a few uh, priests. And, uh, in fact, a lady was at our house the other day, and um, the man that I thought was this lady's father, he kept saying father. It, well, it turned out he wasn't her father. He was the priest. Father... Oh, yeah, Father, no. Father Shea. Father Shea, his name oh, was. And my wife turned okay. the picture around and the lady teared up and it mm. was her priest. It was her favorite priest. <laughs> and he got how he had uh, died and how tall he was. He described him. And she kept saying, no, that's not my dad. So I said, well, I'll get back to him in a minute and uh, find out who he is then because he kept saying father. So I thought he was her dad. Oh. And uh, he, of course, he was father, but he wasn't her dad. <laughs> well, so she was calling know. her dad, daddy, dad, and Ex her well, yeah, sister, exactly, father. father, exactly. I, I said, "Who are you?" He said, "Father." I said, "Okay, is your fa is your dad gone?" And she said, "Yes." So, <laughs> and I described a man as six foot, six foot one, had a heart problem, died of a heart attack, 
And uh, she said no. So I said, well, I'll find out who he is in a minute. And it turned out he was, the lo he was her priest. And my wife had drawn a really good picture of him. Oh, so. I bet you're really busy. Mm, I, I would like to goes. be. I would like to be to do more. I'd like to uh, be able to reach more people. Mm -hmm. no, we're we're busy every weekend, but uh, that's that's you know it's not so much busy during the week. It's the weekends that are busy for us. Well, that's when people have enough time to travel to see you. Yeah. Yeah, we we travel quite a bit. We we go up to uh, Reno a couple times a year usually. Mm -hmm. We come down to San Diego and we're in LA a lot. I so bet you know where all the spiritualist churches are in, in California. No, not really. No, not we, yet. We, <laughs> we uh, you know, we've wanted to, to do more, with, but... Um, we've done a few uh, unity churches uh, and uh, religious science, but uh, mm -hmm. But we've yet to do a group session at a spiritualist church. Oh, only one, only well, one, and that was up in. We're going to uh, get some us. real good ideas with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're open. <laughs> we're going to we're going to manifest something <laughs> for that. In fact, I'd I'd love to have the two of you come lecture in our church together. That, that sounds. And have a workshop. That People sounds very would doable. Love it. That would be really exciting. I had no idea that you did this. This is really exciting. Some of my yeah. favorite subjects. I'm an artist too. It's sort of neat that we do it together. That's oh, that's yes. my thing. It's, that's it's great. Fantastic. Well, tell me what your most interesting story is before we get ready to go today. Oh gosh. Uh. <laughs> I've got one that I just did recently. Like I said, I would, I draw these little doodles after uh -huh. words. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, one of the things that I drew was a little baseball. And it was just perfectly drawn, and I wrote Mickey Mantle on it. Oh. Well, it turned out that the uh, man that we, were ha we had sitting with us had a signed Mickey Mantle baseball. Oh. And my. he was his idol. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, she's pretty, I mean, another fella came to the house uh, a month ago, and he was moving out to um, New, Jersey. New Jersey the next day. He didn't tell us that. And my wife drew the front of his house that he's moving to <laughs> with the little picture window, the arch door, and even the furniture inside on the left. I mean... So, I'm very visual. My, my <laughs> mediumship is visual. He hears a lot more than I do. I don't hear very much. But, so together we do all, all of it. Can you tell me how you're... Ability to visualize manifests itself. Is this, you're like your magic theater, your magic screen, your third eye, or or you just see it inside, or how? I I actually do see it inside. He he sees the things outside. I usually close my eyes uh, mm -hmm. to get a visualization, mm -hmm. but it's uh, not just visual. It's feeling too. While I'm drawing, I'll feel. Is that right or is that wrong? Is it like you're doing automatic drawing? Sometimes, sometimes. I have other artists sometimes come through. Oh, okay. Norman well, Rockwell comes through every once in a while. Oh, I really? love it when he does. Oh, wow. <laughs> and when that happens, do they tell you who they are? I can feel, feel him. I know his vibrations, plus I know uh, what he draws like, and it's... It's very much a Norman Rockwell drawing when I'm done. I see. Do you ever have someone come to you and they, they're asking for a drawing and of someone because they don't have a photograph of someone? And they give you a name and you're able to... No, I don't work that way. You don't do that No, way. it's whoever on the other side wants to pose for me. When oh, the I person see. comes to me, they, they have to be open to whoever it is. And it may not even belong to them. I've had people come through that belong to their friends. Oh, I see. It's just connected somehow. Okay. Is it true that children and people age on the other side? Yes. They do? Yes, they do. They grow up over there. That must make a lot of people very happy to hear that when their children have yes. died young. Yes. Um, they can see them progress. Yeah. Yeah. It's really wonderful. When it's been a child that's died young, 
but not a baby. I usually draw them the age that they they crossed. But if it's like a uh, miscarriage mm -hmm. or, or an abortion, mm -hmm. they'll come through usually the age that they would be now. Just oh. to say that, you know, sort of proves who they are that way. I see. That is fascinating. I think that's one of the things that fascinated me the most when I read the book that a British lady wrote years ago that I read. Yes, Carl Pold. Yes, it was wonderful. She comes through me sometimes too and helps me draw. I can tell oh. when she comes through too. That was fascinating. Well, thank you so much. We'll have to, we'll have to be busy on the telephone and make some other kind of arrangements too. And I want to thank Oliver Kerr for helping us make psychic experience happen again. And just remember, the First Purchase Church where angels come, and so can you, any Sunday morning, we're there ready to say hello. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.